Let's take a look at the design of our grant table. Let's see what we can figure out about its size consumption of its fields. Go to Design, and the first field is a char 3. How much space does a char 3 take up? 3 bytes. Let's see what it's going to tell us about this NVAR char 50. It says 100 bytes. Well, if we don't fill it, it won't take up that much. That's just the maximum it'll take. How about an integer? The integer takes up 4 bytes. All right, how about a small money? That also takes up 4 bytes. So we can predict 3 out of 4 of these fields and exactly how much data they will take up before we even put data in them. The only one we don't know exactly how much each row is going to consume is the one that has the variable number of characters. That we'll have to calculate after we put data in the table. Okay, so let's calculate what we do know. We know the header takes up 4 bytes. We know the fixed length data takes up 3 plus 4 plus 4 or 11 bytes. We know the variable block needs to exist. Why? Because we do have at least one variable length data field in this table. So it's going to take up two bytes for the creation of the variable block, plus two bytes for each piece of variable length data, and we have one of those fields. Therefore, the variable block will take up four bytes. Variable data itself? Well, we're going to have to get some data to figure out the exact consumption. So the first row takes up 4 bytes for a header, 11 bytes for its fixed length data, 4 more bytes for the variable block, and how many bytes for the actual variable length data payload? Well, 92 space per sense team is a length of 22 characters. Since it's an Unicode NVAR char, that's going to take up a total of 44 bytes. How about the row-by-row row consumption of the employee table? This is in the JProCo database. Let's take a look. We know the header takes up 4 bytes. How about our fixed length data? Well, an int takes up 4 bytes. First name and last name, that's variable data, so we don't know that yet. But date time always takes up 8 bytes. The next two integers each will take up 4 bytes. And the status field is a char 12, that's fixed length taking up exactly 12 bytes since it's not Unicode. So your fixed length data payload for each record is 32 bytes. How about the variable length data? If we have any of these fields, we need a variable block which starts off with 2 bytes. Now we're going to count how many variable length fields we have, and there's two of them, each taking up two additional bytes. Therefore, the variable block here takes up 6 bytes. Without even looking at the data in the table, we figured out several pieces of its actual data consumption, as you can see here. Well, how much data is it actually taking up? Well, we've got to look at the data in the variable length fields to get that final piece of the puzzle. In this record, last name has five characters, Adams, A-D-A-M-S. Are we taking up one byte per character or two? Well, since it's a varchar, it's one byte per character, so this will add five bytes of storage to the last name field. How about first name? There's four letters in the name Alex. That'll take up an additional four bytes. Therefore, we have nine bytes of data consumption in our variable data block. The first record of the employee table appears to be taking up a total of 51 bytes. Back to the room chart table where of course we have a 4 byte header, 7 bytes of fixed length data, a 4 byte variable block, and then an unknown amount for the variable length data payload until we look at the records. We feel pretty much done and comfortable with our data consumption calculations. But that's kind of an oversimplification because there's one more calculation that we need to deal with called the null block. 
how do we calculate how much data is allocated to calculating the size of nulls versus non-null values for nullable data types? In the data portion of your row, right after the fixed data is a calculation we're going to have to perform for what's called the null block. Exactly how much space does your null block take up? Well, you've got to ask, how many fields do I have that are nullable? If I have any at all, boom, the null block is going to have to keep track of my fields. Then, you have to calculate how many fields you have in your table. If you have anywhere between one to eight fields, that takes up another byte. Every eight fields takes up another byte. Therefore, if you had nine fields, you would be taking up two bytes. In this example, we have a total of three fields. It takes up a total of another byte. Therefore, the null block in this example takes up exactly three bytes. Let's do the full-scale calculation of the data consumption of a row in the grant table. The header takes up four bytes. The fixed data here consists of a char three, which takes up three bytes, an int, which takes up four, and a small money, which also takes up four. Therefore, our fixed data payload is 11 bytes. The null block, do we have any nullable data? If yes, well, then the null block needs to keep track of the fields in our table. How many total fields do we have? Four. Okay, that's between one and eight. Therefore, it's going to take up an additional byte in the null block. Our null block is now three bytes. The variable block, do we have any variable length data fields? Yes, we do right here. The creation of the variable block has happened, and it takes up two bytes just to create it. And then, an additional two bytes for each data field we have, that's variable length data types. Since we only have one, our total size of our variable block is four. The variable length data, well, we're going to have to see the records to know that one. Let's look at the fifth grant. And we see the big sixes foundation percent, which has a length of 19 characters. Is that 19 bytes or is that more? Well, it's Unicode, NVAR char. Therefore, it takes up 38 bytes. So this record has 38 bytes dedicated to the variable data payload. Let's run through one more practice example. Let's look at the design of the employee table. The header, four bytes. The fixed data payload, well, we have an int taking up four bytes, a date time taking up eight, another int taking up four, another int taking up four, and then a char 12, which takes up 12 bytes. Therefore, our fixed data payload is 32 bytes. How about the null block? Do we have any nullable fields? Well, we got quite a few of them right here. The very fact that we have some means we're going to have to track all the fields in our table. How many total fields do we have in this table? We've got more than one, and up to eight, we have seven. Okay, an additional byte added to the two-byte null block. Therefore, the null block takes up three bytes. How about the variable block? Do we have any variable length data fields? Yep, we got two. The fact that we have any means that the variable block was created with two bytes. Then we count the number of variable fields, and there's two of them, each taking up two more bytes. Therefore, two plus four is six, or six bytes is dedicated to the variable block. By now, you certainly know, to calculate the variable data payload, we actually need to look at one of the rows. Let's look at row number four. Last name, Kenson. It's seven letters long. It's a regular var char, therefore that takes up seven bytes. David is five letters long. A length of five takes up five bytes in a var char. Therefore, our variable data payload is 12 bytes for this record. Here is a zoom in of lab 3.2, skill check one. Based on the following table design, 
and the following row population in the table, calculate the header, fixed data, null block, variable block, and variable length data payloads for rows 1 through 5. Thank you.